everybody, it's Mark Spect the Comics, and I'm back. This time with my top five books for the month of July. If you want to see what books I'm specking on, stay tuned for that intro. Welcome back. If you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe, like, share that content. Hit that bell notification if you haven't already so that you get my content when I do put it out there. Like I said, we're talking about my top five spec books for the month of July. If you haven't already seen June's top five books, I'll drop the description at the end or drop that link, whatever you want to call it, so you can check that out. This month we got some pretty cool books and one of the books has already popped. You know, the book pop before I got to put the video out. So we'll go over that in a little bit. We're going to do two Marvel, three DC. We'll start with the Marvel books first. First book is going to be Thor issue number 239. You got the uh, first appearance of, I guess it's called the Heliopians, which are the uh, ancient Egyptian gods, more specifically Horus, Osiris, and Isis. So Isis is rumored to appear in the Moon Knight Disney Plus series. They're going to be going, they're going to be exploring a little bit about the uh, ancient Egyptian uh, gods. And um, obviously they're going to be talking a little bit about Khonshu. But while they're doing that, they're going to be talking about some of the other gods. So I'm speculating that the character Osiris will appear on the show. And uh, this is a great cover nonetheless. It's a cover done by Gil Kane. He's one of my, you know, he's up there. He's up there in one of my top artists of all time. But um, this copy right here was bought for $6. You can easily right now buy them on eBay, $10 to $15. Um, even graded copies, you can get like a, I think it was a 9.0 that sold recently for 90 bucks. So this book is really undervalued. It's kind of like a sleeper book right now. But I expect for it to pick up a little bit as, you know, next year's show's coming up. They might do a little bit of trailers of ancient Egypt. And it may end up being, bringing this book up a little bit in value. So this is book number one. All right. So I talked a little bit about my, um, one of the books that has already saw some instant gains. And this book had to do with the Loki series. So, um... You know, we all saw what happened in, in uh, episode six. We had that big reveal, Jonathan Majors showing up in the series, and I was blown away. So, uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you're living under a rock, didn't watch Loki, you know, a variant of King the Conqueror showed up. So, the show beat me to the spec about this book, but it's okay. I still got you. Um, the big one of the big books that popped up already was this book right here. This is Avengers number 267. Has a bunch of first appearances, uh, more specifically to do with the the Council of Kangs, which he talked a little bit about briefly in the episode, and uh, the importance that it has with the different multiverses and him. You know, one of his variants talking to the different Kangs and so forth before they start having this big multiversal war. But um, this book right now is currently going, it's all over the place. There's been a ton of copies that sold, probably anywhere from the 30 to 50 plus dollar range. And I still think this is a good book to spec on. You can easily find this in your back issue bins. If you do a little bit of hunting, digging, you can you can find this. I bought this book. A week before episode six launched and I bought it for three dollars so they're out there look around look for your flea markets and you know dollar bins sometimes they're just placed in the wrong area and you can find it um, this book still has a bunch of room to grow just because you know Kang itself the, the, the main villain is not gonna appear until Ant-Man at least that's what they're saying but, you know, Jonathan Majors' character or different variants of the characters could pop up in different movies going forward. So this book has some, you know, 
This book has some good gaining power going forward, but um, this is one of the Kang, you know, books I recommend picking up, even right now with it, you know, up in value currently. But if you can't, or if you don't want to spend this um, amount of money on this book, there's alternatives. So, there was a few other books that popped up in value this week. Avengers 269 and from this current run is also up like 20 to $30 right now. It's a storyline that features Kang versus Immortus. It's also a great cover. There's earlier Avengers, Avengers issue number 129. That has a great Kang cover. Um, that's quite affordable as well. I want to say this book right here is super slept on right now. And this is from the Young Avengers run. This is Young Avengers issue number four. And amazing cover by Jim Chung. And my copy is actually signed right there by Jim Chung at the bottom. This book was, you know, 10 bucks. Um, you can definitely get them probably in your dollar bins because this is not one of the Young Avengers books that are sought after. There's no, you know, first appearance in here, but it's an amazing cover. And any Kang cover right now is going up in value. So, nice alternative, especially if you can't afford his first appearance, which like I said, Kang is, he's one of my, he's, he's always been revered as a great villain. He's my personal favorite villain of all time. I know there's a lot of great villains out there, but he's my favorite. So if you can't afford this book, you can afford second appearances, you know, any of those books that I mentioned previously. So uh, definitely check those out. And I'm sure you'll be able to find some good deals on that. All right. Third book on the list. Now we're going into DC. So the first book for DC I'm going to recommend is Omega Man issue number three and that's the first appearance of Lobo um, he's personally my favorite DC villain of all time he's not the most powerful you know he's not like an Omega level you know villain but he has he, there's just something about him he's badass he has some spunk to him he's ruthless he doesn't care he, he goes by no you know no boundaries um, so, great cover by Keith Giffen. I do have a 9.8 copy uh, somewhere. I'll post a picture of it. But you can get this book raw for under $100. I want to say, you, can, you look on eBay, recent sales, 50 to 70 bucks. Even graded copies like 8.5 to 9.0 are selling for under 100 bucks. So, this is often a book you can see on the wall. I picked up my copy originally on the wall for 60 bucks raw. Never even pressed it, came back a 9.8. That's how flawless this book was. Um, but you, you'll often see this book on walls. It's a classic cover. I love that cosmic cover with the colors. It's just, it's, and it's a bondage cover, which I like bondage covers as well. So that's book number three, Omega Man, issue number three, first appearance of Lobo. Number four, we're going to go into another, what I think is very undervalued, uh, team appearance and uh, it is DC Comics Presents issue number 26 so if you're a DC fan you know what this book is but if you're a big Marvel fan you're probably not aware of this but you are aware of this cover it's the first team appearance of the new Teen Titans Robin, Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, Cyborg, Raven, Beast Boy and Starfire. There are actual first appearances on there and you got the first appearance of Raven, first appearance of Cyborg, and first appearance of Starfire. So great team up for this book. This book came out in October of 1980. Marv Wolfman and Jim Starlin. I'm going to be going to Terrificon when I come back from vacation, and if I see this book on the wall somewhere, I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna get Jim Starlin to sign it. I love this cover, it's a classic cover. You see Superman, you see the Green Lantern, you know, he's doing his thing. It says on that, stop it Green Lantern. 
Your kryptonite is killing me. Precisely what I had in mind, Superman. It's just cla it's classic. You got like I in my opinion, for a team appearance, this has gotta be way up there on one of the more undervalued books out there, especially for a DC book. Which DC in general, in my opinion, is quite undervalued for the age. This is you know, this is Bronze Age. But this team appearance in particular is very undervalued. If you get a 9.8, I saw 9.8s recently sale on eBay for about two grand for a book of this significance. I still think it's very undervalued, but you know, you can get raw copies of, of this book. If you do some hunting, you can get raw copies of this for right around the 80 to $100 range for mid grade. And I think that's a great investment. Like I said, I want to keep these picks to $100 or less. Hey, if you want to spend that money and go for a high grade, I highly recommend it, but I want to try to keep this affordable for the top five. So that's book number four, DC Comics Presents issue number 26. And we're here, issue number, sorry, book number five. Um, this is going to be a rather new book. I tried not to do these specs on the really, really brand new books because there's just too many unknowns, but the story has been great two issues in and for the last DC book we're talking about nice house on the lake issue number one so great book by right now probably top three writers out there James Tinney in the fourth he's had already great successes with Batman series that's going on right now Justice League do I have to say it Something is killing the children, and so forth. This is just another continuation of how hot his stories are. And it's being said already two issues in with Nice House on the Lake. Um, the book's going into a third printing that's already been confirmed, and I believe a fourth printing. So the second printing came out last week. Their printing, I believe, is coming out this week, and it's the uh, distressed-looking cover. And I believe the third printing is looking a little bit more distressed. And then there's a 1 in 25 that I think is pretty cool. It's a design variant, 1 in 25, with all of the, um, the uh, characters that have been, I believe, introduced already in the storyline. It, it's, it's a cool picture. I, I like design variants myself, but we're focusing more on the first printing. First printing is going for around the $15 to $20 range. Now, mind you, not all shops out there got a lot of books. It was a heavily printed, you know, uh, first first book, I think was around 100,000 plus issues. But when I went to the stores and, and looked for them, they were all sold out. Um, I was never able to get a first printing, but I will get a third printing. I already read the the, uh, the story digitally. It's great, great, great. I highly recommend it. I'm going to be looking for the third printing. There is a fourth printing coming out. I don't know if it's going to be more distressed looking or whatever the case may be. But uh, I'm on the hype train. You know, I always say when it's $100 or less, it's a great investment. If you believe in the story, if you believe in the artist, and you believe in the writing. And when all those three put together and the community also agrees on that then it has a recipe for a home run and if the previous you know books i talked about batman justice league um something is killing the children is just a little bit of uh you know coming together of what i was talking about there then nice house on the lake is going to be another book that does well as well so look out for that book. Um, it's a 12 issue series, maxi series as I call it. I highly recommend that book and that's why it's number five on the list. Nice House on the Lake issue number one. I recommend getting a really nice copy raw in that 10 to 20 you know, plus dollar range. Send it off to grading and hope to get that 9.8 or get multiple copies, like I said, Get four or five copies. Get up to 100 bucks worth. 
because uh, nine eights right now are selling for right around the one seventy dollar range. So that right now, if you bought that and sold it, you got a quick return on investment, and then you can have a few books free. Um, but I I'm a believer in this story. I think it's it's going to do well, and it's going to continue to go up in value. So that's my top five books for the month of July. If you like that. Hit the bell notification so you get them more frequently when I do come out for new content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about the top five for the month of July. And uh, check out June's if you haven't already. And until next time, Max with the Comics. Out.